we're going to tie a hula damsel. We begin with a wiggle shank. This is the small ones. And this is going to be the abdomen section of our hula damsel. The thread I'm using is Uni 17 aught Trico in white. We begin at the eye and lay a base of, base of thread on this shank. Now we're going to not use the whole length of the shank. We'll use about three quarters of it and cover it in thread, bring it to the back. I'm going to take three ostrich hurls and just leave a little bit of a tail. The tails are about, oh, about half the length of the shank. And they're not really a tail, there's some kind of paddle on a hula damsel. And what it'll do is when you strip this fly through the water, the back end will wiggle and the tails, quote unquote tails, or ostrich roll will wiggle also. It'll just enhance that wiggle. Tie it in with one wrap. Lock it down. Now I'm going to take a piece of D-rib in olive, small, and I'm going to heat up a pair of hemostats and crimp the end of it so I get a taper, so I don't get a buildup. You don't have to heat your hem hemostats very long. You're just wanting to, to create a taper. I used to do this with a knife or an X-Acto blade. Ah, I got tired of cutting my fingers when I cut so, much, cut so many of these. I just do it with a pair of heated hemostats. Creates a nice flat area. And I'll trim a bit of it off. That alcohol lamp in the back, you can just get that in the um, eBay. They have them on it. eBay, just go under alcohol lamp. Now I'm going to lock it in. And then I'm going to take another spool of 17 knot uni, tie it off, tie it in behind the eye of this shank. And then I'm going to wrap the D-rib up until the eye and then use this second spool of thread to tie it off. I'm going to build a little bit of a taper. You don't have to. <laughs> I'm just being picky. All right, now I'm going to take my D-rib D and wrap it up to the front with concentric wraps, butt it up against each other. Now I get a little bit of tension on the, on the D-rib, and I'll ease off on that tension. So I've got not only the thickness of the shank, but I've also got tension on the D-rib to give it thickness and to make it taper. When I first came up with this fly, I needed a way. I'd see those damsels swimming, nymphs swimming in the water. I go, there's got to be a way to make them move. You'll notice that in the in nature, the head stays still, and the body does all the wiggling, what they call a sinusoidal motion in the background. The trick is a lot of people do articulated flies, but they're usually much much larger than this.
So I've tied, tied off my D-rib. Now I'm going to take that ostrich hurl and pull it along the sides. And then I'm going to wrap my thread up through it to capture it. Now if you'll see on a regular damsel, they don't have gills on it. But I put them on there just to give it more motion on the back. I'm just going to make my way up to the front. I'm trying to keep those the ostrich trail on the sides of the shank as much as possible. I don't try to hit every single rib. I get most of them though. Now I'm going to trim off my excess and tie off that ostrich roll. Here I'm getting a little too fickle. I've got my magnifier and my bodkin and I'm just pulling out some of the hairs. They got trapped a little bit, but not much. So you just take a second. Now I'm going to take a pair of uh, wire cutters and the portion that I used to mount in the vise, I'm going to nip that off, just break, cut it off. And we'll set that aside. Now I'm going to take a 2487, and this happens to be a size 14. It's just a bit oversized. You could use a 16, but I oversize it just a little bit to give me more gape. The bead I'm using is a 2.0 millimeter tungsten bead, brass colored. Now I'm going to tie in my thread. Once again, it's at 17 knot uni, Trico thread. And I'm going to take a piece of 50 pound mono. And you can just go to your local hardware store and say, hey, I'd like to buy a yard of this, and they'll sell it to you for less than 50 cents. And what I'll do is I'll take a piece that's probably three quarters, half inch to three quarters of an inch long, and crimp it in the middle. And these are going to be my eyes. I take my tweezers, hold it in tweezers, and run it through the tip of the flame, and it'll pick up some of the soot so I don't have to darken it as much with a marker. This is a good trick. See where I'm going through the middle tip of that flame? It actually picks up some of the soot, and it's even on both sides instead of having to melt one side and then melt the other. And I'll just figure it on. Now I leave a little bit of space between the, the eyes and the eye of the hook because I'm going to have to pull my medallion sheeting up over the top of that 
and fit it into there. And this is just a simple figure eight. I am going to put a little a drop of super glue on there also though. I push my bead up right up against it and then drop, bring my thread behind that bead. Now I lay down a base of thread and I'm going to take a piece of 3x floral carbon and it's actually going to be my hinge. I'll take it and I'll flatten one end of it, leave a space of about 3 eighths of an inch and flatten it again. And what I'm doing is I'm matching, I'll tie in the first flattened area, attach my tail or abdomen section, pull it over and then have the two flattened areas of the tippet match. Because flattened to flattened is going to hold a lot better than flattened to, to circular or round. And see, I'm, I flatten the front end of it. Now go back 3 eighths of an inch, flatten it again. Those two flattened areas are going to match up and then leave a loop and that's my hinge area. When I first built these, I actually left the hook on the back shank. I don't care what I did, it just would not hold. So I just took that hook off the back side of it. And take my abdomen. I'll do one little wrap. And then I'll, let, I'll adjust it by pulling on the abdomen section so that the two flat sections m match up. Now I'm going to take that tippet material, tie it down, and then pull it over the top of the eyes, underneath the hook of the shank, and back over the top again, and then tie it down to the back. And trim it. And then I'll tie down the rest of that thread. So I get a pretty, you know, I'm not getting any pressure it's going to be on that abdomen section, but it's not going anywhere. I don't have them fail very often. And just to enhance it, I'll put a little super glue there. Now I've got a piece of medallion sheeting and this is in hopper green or mottled green or mottled off olive and it's about oh, an eighth of an inch to three six three thirty seconds wide three excuse me three sixteenths wide and it's going to be my it's my wing case. Now tie it in back until the where I first tied in that first the tippet. Now I'm going to create a dubbing brush out of CDC and a pinch, and I do mean a pinch, only six or seven fibers of UV ice dub in light olive. I just need a little bit of sparkle. And I only need one side of a CDC feather. See, we get, I've got it trapped in my clip. And trim off the stem. And see, I just got that one side. You can see a little bit of UV ice dub and the rest of those CDC fibers. Now I'm going to take that 17 knot thread and split it and create my dubbing brush. The trick with splitting 17 knot thread is you'll see I'll take my bodkin, lift it up. First off, it's unwound a little bit. Use my finger as a backing. It'll flatten against my finger and then I point at the middle of it and it'll split. I put my clip in there. See, I just have a few, very few UV ice dub fibers. Now I create my brush. What's nice is that the CDC fibers are very light, and so the the 17 knot thread is more than capable of holding it. Now I'm take that medallion sheeting and pull it all the way over right to right behind the eye of my hook, and that's my tie-in point. I'll trim, 
with these nippers that let me go really flush. Now I'll do a couple wraps right behind the eyes too. And I'm actually going to tie off behind the eyes. Trim off my thread. And I got since it's white thread, it does show up a little bit. I'll take a marker and touch it up a bit. And that's a Spanish Copic, Spanish olive. I love that color. It's that tertiary color. I take my black marker. Eh, I don't really need it, but just to darken them up, I'll color the outside. Didn't quite get all the white, so I'm going to take my marker again and touch up some of that white thread I can see. Now I'm going to take my UV resin and I'm going to coat my wing case with it and also a little bit of the eyes. Mostly where I have the marker. It'll help protect those eyes so that they, they stay dark for quite much longer. It builds up a nice little head in there too. I'm going to hit it with my laser curing light. Doesn't take very long. I'm not using very much UV resin. This is UV nonsense that I'm using here. The fly is done.